Well, as we've already been discussing on Wednesday, the state of the country's finances will be laid bare by the Chancellor and it's not going to be pretty. Three quarters of a million people have already lost their jobs during the pandemic. The government's reportedly considering both tax rises and a wage freeze for public sector workers. We can speak now to the General Secretary of the TUC, Francis O. Grady. Uh, well, we'll be talking to the Chancellor directly after you. Um, how concerned are you by these reports that there could be a public sector pay freeze on the cards? Very concerned, Sophie, because millions of key workers cared for us during the crisis and continue to care for us. And I think it's time that we cared for them. And we saw ministers join millions of us out on the doorsteps, clapping firefighters, refuse collectors, social care workers. Uh, I don't think this would be the time to reward them with a real pay cut. At the same time, though, um, public sector workers are paid 7% more than those in the private sector, according to the ONS, and we are facing a jobs crisis in the private sector. Three quarters of a million people already losing their jobs since the beginning of the pandemic, 10 million on furlough. OK, people in the public sector may be facing pay restraint, uh, but those in the private sector are facing no jobs at all. Well, let's put the record straight. The ONS have said that if you adjust for age and qualifications, actually the pay difference between the public and private sector is zero. But it won't help anybody if we end up depressing pay anywhere. What we need is to create good jobs and lift living standards. You know, the Prime Minister only in June promise that this is the end of austerity. There would be no more austerity. Surely the government doesn't think that it can reintroduce austerity for the very people who put their health and in some cases lives on the line to help the rest of us. And I, I think it's, you know, common sense. If you want to motivate a workforce uh, when we're still facing the second wave of the pandemic and we're going to have a tough winter, we all know that, the last thing you do is threaten to cut their pay. So there's still time for the government to step back and I would encourage them to think again. Uh, this, this is not smart politics, it's morally obscene and it's bad economics too. Uh, well, we'll be putting some of that to the Chancellor uh, in just a few moments. Um, Mark Sawatka of the Public and Commercial Services Union said on Friday, if Rishi Sunak fails to pay public sector workers properly, there will be widespread anger and industrial action cannot be ruled out. Would it be responsible to go on strike during a pandemic? I'm really conscious of the feeling out there that People only, uh, or governments only seem to recognise the true value of labour when it's withdrawn. But of course, there is time to sort this out. Uh, nobody can rule anything out at the moment. Uh, but what I am saying and asking for is that the government stands by key workers, uh, respects the contribution they are continuing to make, uh, recognises that this is absolutely the wrong time to be talking about pay cuts. And instead, we need to start talking about fairness. And by the way, even in terms of their own interests, many of those red wall constituencies, you know, are disproportionately dependent on key workers' jobs. The worst thing to do if you uh, want to raise demand in the economy is to cut their pay. They are the very people who spend their pay packets in local uh, businesses and shops. Uh, you really don't want to pull away that uh, demand in the economy now. On the contrary, what we should be absolutely focused on is preventing unemployment and creating good green jobs in the parts of the country that need them most. OK, and... Just finally, and we're expecting, of course, the Prime Minister to announce tomorrow that the lockdown in England will end, but we're going to be going into a new, stricter tier system. Now, of course, we also know uh, just how difficult 2020 has been for many businesses, many shops, pubs, restaurants, so dependent and reliant uh, on that Christmas trade. We know many people have been shopping online at places like Amazon as a result of the lockdown company you've been very critical of in the past. How important is it, do you think, for high street businesses to be able to continue trading once lockdown ends? 
I think it's really important that we do everything we can to ensure that the millions of people who are still working can do so safely. I think that would build confidence and keep many businesses running. You know, in our local high streets, there are people doing uh, takeaways and so on. But we need to make sure that workplaces are safe. That's how you build confidence. And just just one other thing. You mentioned Amazon. Uh, Let's not forget, when we're talking about uh, apparently cutting the real pay of hard-working key workers, that uh, we've seen billions go out the door in contracts, uh, asking very little in return in terms of due diligence, let alone a decent treatment of their workforce. So, you know, again, I think pe- I am appealing to people's sense of fairness and justice here, uh, that, you know, as a country, we cannot look ourselves in the mirror and cut the pay of some of our hard-working uh, key workers. Exemptions for the NHS, that's great, but let's talk about social care, let's talk about prison officers, refuse collectors, delivery drivers, shop workers, all the people who have kept Britain going and should be rewarded for it. OK, Francis Legrady, always good to talk. We'll be talking to you, Chancellor, uh, about some of those points you raised. Thank you.